Giancarlo Fisichella made his car racing debut in 1992 with the Italian Formula 3 Championship and won a race in his very first season at the Imola circuit. He did two more years of F3 after that, winning the championship in 1994 along with the once prestigious F3 Monaco race. Fisichella had well and truly arrived on the open wheeler scene. In 1995, Fisichella made a move to touring car racing, possibly believing that F1 was just too difficult to reach, and he proved to be competitive in this too. The DTM Championship didn't go particularly well for him, but by the time the International Touring Car Championship started, he was able to take a surprise podium at Mugello by overtaking both his more experienced teammate Nicola Larini and future IndyCar champion Dario Franchitti. He went on to score six more ITC podiums the following year, but never quite managed to win. In 1996, Formula One saw a fair few team changes over the off-season. Ferrari brought in an all-new lineup of Schumacher and Irvine, leaving Irvine's seat at Jordan vacant. Martin Brundle moved to Jordan to finish his career, leaving his Ligier seat vacant. Pedro Diniz moved from 40 to Ligier, Luca Badoa moved from Minardi to 40, and this allowed Minardi to call up Giancarlo Fisichella, who made his debut at the Australian Grand Prix. Fisichella only did 8 of the 6 races due to his commitments in the ITC, but when he raced he generally outpaced his teammate Pedro Lamy, despite this being Lamy's fourth season in Formula 1. Giancarlo was snapped up by Jordan when Brundle retired. Having scored his first World Championship points at Imola, Giancarlo's first taste of champagne would come at the 1997 Canadian Grand Prix. He qualified 6th on the grid, but got a blistering start and found himself 3rd before Turn 1. He was later jumped in the pits by a Lacey, but when Olivier Panis broke his legs in a serious accident, the race was stopped, and Fisichella was confirmed 3rd. The race had travelled enough distance that he was given the full points for this position. In the same year, the Belgian Grand Prix was as wet as the bottom of a baby with diarrhoea. Fisichella had qualified fourth in the dry, and he passed a Lacey for third after the safety car start. While his teammate Ralph crashed out, Giancarlo stayed steady and eventually finished second on the drying track. It was a sign of what was to come for Jordan a year later, although Giancarlo would be snatched up by Benetton for 98. Talking of greasy conditions, this is the end of the 1998 Austrian Grand Prix qualifying session, as a drying track encouraged even the best drivers to push and make mistakes. Sauber were busy celebrating on a lacy pole when all of a sudden Giancarlo Fisichella came through to set a stunning lap time, over 7 tenths of a second faster than anyone else. It was his first pole position, and it gave him his best shot yet of a victory. Sadly, it wasn't to be, as he and Alessi crashed out of the Grand Prix. Personally, I'd call this a racing incident, but feel free to leave in the comments if you disagree with me. Skipping ahead to 2001, Giancarlo had settled into the Benetton team and was paired up with Jensen Button, a future world champion. Unfazed by Jensen's obvious skill, Giancarlo quite frankly thrashed him, scoring 8 points to Jensen's 2. This included a third place at Spa-Francorchamps, which by now had established itself as a happy hunting ground for Fizzy. Jensen went on to describe Fisichella as the best ever driver of bad F1 cars. In fact, possibly Fizzy's most famous achievement came in a bad car at the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix in the wet. After almost being wiped out by his teammate Ralph Furman having a suspension failure, Giancarlo didn't just survive a race that claimed the likes of Montoya, Button, Weber, Alonso, and even Schumacher, but he actually won the thing by outperforming his car and overtaking Raikkonen for the lead. The race was red flagged after Alonso's crash, and Raikkonen was famously declared the victor. However, when the race was reviewed, it was found that there had been a mistake, and that the race had been red flagged one lap later than was originally announced. This made Fisichella the winner, and he was given his maiden first place trophy in a ceremony before the San Marino Grand Prix. After a year with Sauber where he beat Felipe Massa, Giancarlo Fisichella had some big boots and baggy overalls to fill as he stepped up to Renault in a seat swap with Jacques Villeneuve.
who is technically his second stint with the team as they had previously been Benetton. At the first Grand Prix in Australia, wet weather hampered several drivers in qualifying, including Fernando Alonso, and Fisichella took an albeit slightly lucky pole. He went on to do everything he needed to do in the race though, and he won ahead of Barrichello and Alonso. It was a great start to the year, although sadly he would retire from the next three Grand Prix and relinquish the championship lead, eventually being classified fifth in the standings as his teammate claimed the title. By now a very respected member of the F1 community, Giancarlo got his final F1 victory at the 2006 Malaysian Grand Prix, leading Alonso home to a Renault 1-2. He quickly dropped out of contention for the title that year, but 2006 as a whole was slightly more successful for Fizzy, as he scored 12 more points despite starting the same number of races. He was classified 4th in the standings, just 8 points behind Massa in 3rd. The race that I remember the most clearly from Giancarlo's career is definitely the 2009 Belgian Grand Prix. Fisichella had been with the Force India squad since the very start in 2008, but by August 2009 they still hadn't scored a single points finish. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, they turned up with a stormer of a car and Fizzy was able to go through to Q3 and deliver a stunning pole position. I was on holiday at the time, and when I heard he was on pole, I distinctly remember everyone I was with celebrating, especially my mum. He actually led a large part of the race, although it was passed by Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari, and he almost won the entire event, finishing less than a second behind the fin. It was a truly shocking result, especially since it wasn't down to other people retiring or changeable weather. Giancarlo genuinely fought for it on pace, and it was his last race for Force India too. For the remainder of 2009, Fisichella would replace Bador at Ferrari and achieve his dream of racing for the Scuderia. After his Formula 1 career, Fisichella kept racing Ferraris but on a very different world stage, sports car racing. In 2010, he made his Le Mans debut, and two years later, paired with Gianmaria Bruni and Tony Wielander, he won the LMGTE Pro Class by three laps at the world's most prestigious endurance race. Funnily enough, the LMGTE AM Class was won by a car containing his old F1 teammate Pedro Lamy. The 2013 Le Mans 24 Hours didn't go so well for Giancarlo, but in 2014 he was back with Bruni and Wielander to win the race all over again, this time by one lap. Not many people can claim to be class winners at Le Mans, and fewer can say they've done it twice. As well as Le Mans, Fisichella has taken class wins in the Petit Le Mans twice, as well as the 6 Hours of Sao Paulo twice, and he's also won the 6 Hours of Silverstone and the 6 Hours of Bahrain. On top of this, he's taken class podiums at the 24 Hours of Daytona and the 12 Hours of Sebring twice. All of these results were behind the wheel of a Ferrari GT car. Okay, this is kind of a joke achievement, but I'm serious, just look at these works of art. My absolute favourite F1 helmets of all time are Fisichella's from the 2007 and 2008 seasons. They're just so good and underrated, like Giancarlo himself you might say. Thank you all for watching this video, drive safe and I'll see you next time.